All authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Go, therefore, and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things that I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. For some time now, we have been talking about the way to heaven, and consequently, we have spoken frequently of the church. It is through the church that you can stand in a right relationship with God in the final analysis. So friends, the greatest activity in which you may engage will be to investigate thoroughly the church of Christ. You need to look into the basis of man's redemption. It is an interesting thing that no matter who you are, what you may accumulate, how good or bad you may be, how famous, well-known you may become in this whole world, we all will wind up in exactly the same place. There is no question of that. You recall John's statement in Revelation chapter 20 at verse 11. He said, I saw a great white throne and him who sat thereon, before whose face the heavens and the earth fled away, and there was found no place for them. Friends, too many people live loosely and without thought of spiritual matters in this whole world. And when the day of judgment will come, they could wish there was a place to which they could flee, some place they could escape the presence of the Almighty, but there is no place to go. Ah, yes, and he continued, he said, And I saw the great and the small stand before the throne, and the books were opened, and another book was opened, which is the book of life. And the dead, the dead were judged out of the things that are written in the books according to their works. I remember that Paul said, eh, what is that, Romans chapter 14, verse 12? So then each one of us shall give account of himself unto God in the day of judgment. Friends, there's no question about that. Hebrews 9, verse 27, it is appointed unto man once to die. And we understand that. There's no problem with that. Oh, and after this, the judgment. You and I will stand before God in judgment. And having gained the whole world with the human uh, ability to make money has nothing to do with it. Or out of total poverty, of no value at all. No, no. You and I will stand before God to give an account of how we have dealt with His Word. That's uh, you and I need to examine, I mean really thoroughly, look into the church of Christ. Well, someone says, yes, but now, preacher, where would I find the, the resources? I mean, where would I get the materials? Where can I find the information if I'm to totally investigate the, oh, that's the most simple part of it. Yes, sir, all that you need to know, as a matter of fact, the only source of available information is the Bible, just uh, the one book. And marvelously enough, it's very, very simple, written down between the sixth and the eighth grade level. You have no trouble really understanding the Bible and all that you need to know to make a thorough investigation of the Lord's church is found in the Bible. Now, you are aware, of course, that the Bible uh, covers three dispensations of time. There is the patriarchal age, patriarch, the father, God dealt with the heads of tribes or families that lasted for some 2,500 years. There was no written law from God. And following that, of course, the Mosaic period. Uh, God gave a law for ancient Israel, the descendants of Abram, a written law. And, of course, that lasted about 1,500 years. And then, of course, Christ is the fulfillment of that law. That's what the Old Testament is all about, pointing toward the redemption of the human family. You see, as an Adam, all die. Oh, no question about that. 
uh, through the one man, sin entered into the world, and death through sin. So death passed unto all men, for that all have sinned. Romans chapter 5 at verse 12. In the transgression of Adam, paradise was lost. Humanity was alienated from God. And friends, God made a promise right there in Genesis 3 verse 15 that the seed of the woman, and we've explained this many times, the Christ would deliver a fatal blow to the head of Satan, bruise his head, while suffering a minor wound. Ah, yes, he had to die on the cross, but in three days he was raised. And the advantage of that? Oh, uh, Hebrews chapter 2, 14 and 15. Since then the children are sharers in flesh and blood. He also himself partook of the same, that through death he might bring to naught him that had the power of death, that is, the devil, and might deliver all them who through fear of death were all their lifetime subject to bondage. Marvelously enough, through the cleansing power of the blood of the Son of God, I need not fear Satan. Oh no, he's helpless. The only way Satan can enter my life is for me to drop the guard. Yes, sir, to open the gate. And I don't have to do that. I can walk in the illuminated pathway of the Son of God. Oh, and that is so very, very important. Investigate the Church of Christ? Sure. Uh, the authority for that is, of course, the New Testament. Now, the word new is used in contrast with the Old Testament. Some of types, shadows, and prophecies of which Jesus Christ is the antitype, the substance, and the fulfillment. Oh yes, what then is the law? Oh, it was given because of transgression till the seed should come through whom the promise should be made. Uh, this is verse 19 of Galatians chapter 3. Wait a minute. The law was given because of transgression, right, to make sin sinful. By the works of the law shall no flesh be justified, for through the law cometh the knowledge of sin. That's Romans chapter 3 at verse 20. So back to verse 19 in Galatians chapter 3. Oh, the law was given to make sin sinful. How long was it to last until the seed should come through whom the promise hath been made? Oh, wait, wait a minute. Who is this seed? Oh, if you back up to verse 15, Brethren, I speak after the manner of men, though it be but a man's covenant and will, testament. Yet when it hath been confirmed, no man maketh it void or addeth thereto. Now to Abraham were the promises spoken and to his seed. He saith not unto seeds as of many, but to thy seed, which is Christ. Oh, then the law was given and was to be authoritative until the seed should come. Right. So when Christ came, he, of course, is the fulfillment of the prophecies, the teaching of the Old Testament that foretold the coming of a Redeemer. So consequently, when he came, he fulfilled the law. You recall what he said in Matthew 5, verses 17 and 18. He said, Think not that I came to destroy the law. I came not to destroy, uh, but to fulfill. Till heaven and earth pass away, not one jot or one tittle shall in any wise pass from the law, till all things be fulfilled. Oh, and I remember that after his resurrection from the dead, uh, just prior to his ascension uh, to the Father, he said to his disciples, in Luke chapter 24, verse 44, this is that which I spake unto you while I was yet with you, that all things that are written in the law of Moses, in the prophets, and in the Psalms concerning me hath fulfillment. So he fulfilled the law. The meaning of the word fulfilled is observed by just turning it around. He filled it full. Uh, that's it. That's what the law was all about. It foretold the coming of a Messiah through which alienated humanity could be reconciled uh, to its maker. That's what Christ did when He came. He made reconciliation, salvation from sin. That is, He enabled a sinner such as I to stand in a right relationship with the Almighty God. Ah, that is a marvelous, marvelous thing indeed. You need to read this book. Ah, yes, you need to study uh, this Word. Christ is the authority in the Christian age. Uh, Matthew 17, you remember, 1 through 5. Uh, Jesus took Peter, James, and John with him into the Mount of Transfiguration, transfigured before them. Garments became glistening, whiter than any fuller or launderer on earth could make them. Oh, and there appeared talking with them Moses, representing the law, and Elijah, representing the prophets. 
And Luke explains they were discussing his decease, which must shortly come to pass in Jerusalem. But old Peter, being roused out of sleep, he said, uh, seeing Moses and Elijah, he said, Lord, it's good for us to be here. If thou wilt, I'll build three tabernacles, one for thee, one for Moses, one for Elijah. He would have exalted Moses, representing the law, and Elijah, representing the prophets, to a plane equal with Christ. But a bright cloud overshadowed them. And a voice out of heaven said, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. Hear ye him. Oh, and there was none left but Christ. Moses and Elijah were taken up. They were taken out of the way. Today, we hear Jesus Christ. He has all authority in heaven and on earth. Matthew 28 at verse 18. Yes, sir. We need to hear him. So in our research, in our examination, of the church of our Lord, we need simply to look into the last will and testament of the Son of God. You remember Paul's conclusion of the epistle written to the church at Rome? He's sending greetings, of course, from those who are with him. And he said in chapter 16, verse 16, the churches of Christ salute you. The what? The churches of Christ salute you. Oh yes, you need to examine thoroughly the church of Jesus Christ. No, no, that's not an exclusive name. No, 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 the church is referred to as the kingdom of God. Oh, it's referred to as the body of Christ. A number of appellations apply to the church, each suggesting a relationship sustained by the church, either to God, to Christ, to the world, or to its members. But then for the sake of uh, records and uh, law, we have the Church of Christ. Why would you call it the Church of Christ? Why did Paul, talking of a number of congregations, refer to it as Churches of Christ? Well, Christ built it. It was His in Matthew 16, verse 18. Oh, He purchased it with His blood, Acts chapter 20 and verse 28. Oh, it's the one to which the Lord adds the saved, Acts chapter 2 and verse 47. So then that term is accurate. All you need to do is read this book with an open mind. You know, it's wonderful. Somebody said, oh, well, preacher, that doesn't make sense. Ha, ha, yes, it does. With just reasonable intelligence, and mind just barely reaches reason, but uh, with just reasonable intelligence, if you read this book with an open mind, there's no question about its origin. You see, it couldn't have been written by men or by any group of men, no, sir. It had to be the product of an infinite mind. Ah, and we could demonstrate that time and time and time again, just in the context of the book itself. We need to look into the Word of God, thus to thoroughly investigate the Church of Christ. That's fundamentally important. And now many people, due to background teaching, of course, and I'm talking about basically good people, they say, oh, well, that, that's just one among many. No use for me. Oh, friend, that's, that's the church you read about in the blood-sealed covenant of the Son of God. Oh, you see, where a testament is, there must of necessity be the death of him that made it. And for a testament is a force where there hath been death, for it doth never avail while he that made it liveth. Oh, Jesus Christ, by his death on the cross, validated, made authoritative his last will and testament. Oh, and the interesting thing about it, as we said at the beginning, all of us will wind up in exactly the same spot. We're going to stand before God to be judged out of the things written in the books. Right. In John 12, verse 48, Jesus said, as we've noted many times, He that rejecteth me and receiveth not my sayings, hath one that judgeth him. The words that I have spoken, the same shall judge him in the last day. John chapter 12, verse 48. Oh, and every word in this book, as we've often demonstrated, is a word of Christ. You remember John 16, verse 13. The Lord said to His apostles, speaking of the Holy Spirit, He shall guide you into all truth. But He didn't stop there. He said, He shall not speak from Himself, but whatsoever things He shall hear, these shall He speak. He shall glorify Me, for He shall take of Mine and shall declare it unto you. Oh, through verse 14, every word in this book is a word of Christ. By what will you and I be judged in the final analysis? The word of Christ, the blood sealed covenant of the Son of God. It provides for our redemption. Friends, you need to investigate the church. 
Oh, indeed, the most important work in which you will ever engage is to thoroughly investigate the truth of God. You know, it's amazing to me. The church about which you read in the New Testament <clears throat> has no creed but the Bible, sir. Uh, no, no, no manual or discipline, catechism, confession of faith, Book of Mormon, the Koran, so on. No, no, none of that. All of that is of human origin. Uh, those are human philosophies and doctrines. Oh, and I remember what Jesus said about that uh, when he quoted Isaiah 29 at verse 13 over in Matthew chapter 15 at verse 8. He said, this people honor me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. Hey, on what basis, Lord, do you reach that conclusion? Oh, he continued, in vain do they worship me, teaching as their doctrines the commandments of men. So we need to look into this blood-sealed covenant and uh, see what the Lord has said about the church, about our well-being, our spiritual nature, our salvation. It is so vitally important. No creed but the Bible? Right. You know, it's an interesting thing, but I, let me just refer to this incident. There was a fine young lady that called me who at the time was attending a religious uh, college. And she said, uh, Mr. Watkins gave me her name. She said, we have been assigned the responsibility of looking into the various denominations, as she said, and I understood that. Uh, and my assignment was the Church of Christ. She said, would you mind helping me with some questions? Oh, I said, I'd be happy to, certainly be glad to. Now, I haven't said a word yet, but book, chapter, and verse. For every question she asked, book, chapter, and verse. Uh, no creed, but the Bible. I remember that statement of Peter in 1 Peter chapter 3 at verse 15. But sanctify in your heart Christ Jesus as Lord, being ready always to give an answer to everyone that asketh with meekness and fear, humility. No, no, not trying to show I know it and you don't know it. I'm righteous, you're not. Woo, 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 woo. That's the opposite of Christianity. No, sir. Christianity is made manifest in humility, in the abasing of oneself to the edification of others. Oh, but it is a remarkable thing that the New Testament church, the Church of Christ, has no creed but the Bible. Oh, and it's also interesting that it binds no name upon its members except the name of Christ. First Peter chapter 4, verse 15. You recall Peter said, Let no man suffer as a murderer or as a thief or an evildoer or as a meddler in other men's matters. Oh, but if any man suffered as a Christian, let him not be ashamed, but let him glorify God in this name. In what name may I glorify God? Christ's name, a Christian. Oh, what other name uh, through which I may, uh, you know, glorify God uh, could I use? What? To, none. There is no other name. No, no. You can only glorify God in the name Christian. Acts 11, verse 26, the disciples were called Christians first in Antioch. Someone said, well, now, uh, just a minute, preacher, what kind of friend? There are no kinds of Christians. You're either a Christian or you aren't. You see, a Christian follows Christ. No, no, not human philosophy. Not, as we said, the manual of the discipline or any other human creed. It simply follows Christ. Christ. No creed but the Bible binds no name upon its members except Christ's name. And it's interesting that it speaks where the Bible speaks. Oh, and it's silent where the Bible is silent. 1 Peter 4 verse 11, If any man speak, let him speak as the oracles of God. It is so important. You see, my ideas are of no value. No, no. Uh, any thoughts or doctrines that I may have, and to, uh, that's no worth a flip, no say. Book, chapter, and for what did the Lord say? Well, someone says, preacher, we can't always know what the Lord, oh, yes, yes, sir. <clears throat> Every word of it is right here. Well, oh, the marvelous thing about it, it is so easy to understand. Haven't we illustrated time and again that if you delete the proper name from the Bible, the entire Bible, and the proper names really have nothing to do with your salvation. Oh, the length of the average word is a little less than five letters. 
that's marvelous, isn't it? It is so very, very simple. Book, chapter, and verse. Investigate the Lord's church. It will have to do with your eternal destiny. It is the only way. An investigation of truth, the Lord's church, in obedience thereto, standing in the right relationship with God, it's the only way that you can enter into life. Oh, I remember that scene of the judgment. All whose names were not written in the Lamb's book of life were cast into the lake of fire. Oh, this is the second death, even the lake of fire. You see, as we've explained, you and I are made in the image and the likeness of God. Genesis 1, 26 and 27. But God is a spirit, John 4, 24. But a spirit doesn't have flesh and bone. Right, verse 39, Luke chapter 24. Oh, then my being made in the image and the likeness of God has nothing to do with the physical appearance. <laughs> no, 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 no. You are an immortal spirit possessed of free moral agency. You're a creature of choice. Oh, then you must decide whether or not you would love to live in glory in association with all the redeemed of all the ages, in the presence of the Almighty, or in a place where the worm dieth not and the fire is not quenched. Hell prepared for the devil and his angels. Friends, you will be in one or the other of those places eternally, say, and it'll be in a very short time. Ooh, it really flies, doesn't it? Yeah, three or four years ago, I was 25. Ooh, man, agile, able, and catch you. <coughs> I'm 85. <laughs> three or four years, that's the way it seems. It just flies. It passes, and man born of woman is a few days and full of trouble. Cometh forth as grass that is cut down. Fleeth also as a shadow, and continueth not. Job chapter 14 at verse 1. Oh, this earthly life is very brief. Friend, that's why we need an understanding of God's will. That's why we need to investigate the church of Jesus Christ. You see, it has no head but Christ. Oh, no, though, there's no popa, pop, popa, pop, whatever, pope or papa. Uh, no, no, uh, nothing like that at all. No, no, the head of the church is Christ. Yes, sir. Uh, the most uh, remote digital member of my body takes orders from my head. Oh, same thing, same thing. Church is one body made up of many members, Paul said, 1 Corinthians 12 at verse 12. Oh, but every member of the church takes orders from the head. It, consequently, just as my physical body has within it uh, the disposition of every member working for the good of the body as a whole, uh, so it is with the church of our Lord. Every member of the church works for the good of the body as a whole. He gives himself in service to others. Oh, that's Christianity. That's what Christ did. He came not to be ministered unto, but to minister, and to give his life a ransom for many. And that is exactly the way we are uh, to live. Its purpose, the church, what, what is the purpose of the church? Oh, to lead all responsible humanity to Christ. How can we do that? Just one way. The simple proclamation of the good news of human redemption. That is the preaching of the gospel. You remember that Jesus said to his disciples, Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. The, the purpose of the... Oh, without faith it's impossible to be well-pleasing to him. Hebrews 11 at verse 6. Oh, preach the gospel to every creature. The result, he that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. So then our task today and yours, if you give your life to the Lord, is simply to teach the simple testimony, instruction contained in this book, validated by the shed blood of the Son of God. Oh, and that is the aim of the church. Unto me, who am less than the least of all saints, was this grace given to preach unto the Gentiles the unsearchable riches of Christ, and to make all men see what is the dispensation of the mystery which for ages hath been hid in God, who created all things, to the intent that now unto the principalities and powers might be made known through the church the manifold wisdom of God, according to His eternal purpose, which He purposed in Christ Jesus our Lord. Ephesians 3, verses 8 through 11. Oh yes, the purpose of the church, lead men to Christ uh, through the presentation, the preaching, the teaching of God's Word. And it is a great privilege indeed.
Friends, only the truth will make you free. Jesus said that, didn't he? John chapter 8, verse 32. You shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Truth? Oh, John 17, verse 17. In his prayer to the Father, Jesus said, Sanctify them in truth. Thy word is truth. Friend, that's why you need to investigate the church. Oh, in the investigation of the church, about what you read in this book, you'll learn everything the Lord would have you do to stand in a right relationship with Himself. Well, I remember that was made manifest in the first preaching of the gospel of Christ. Acts chapter 2, uh, all of the apostles are speaking in the various languages of the different people assembled. Oh, but Peter's sermon is recorded. Preach the death, burial, resurrection, the ascension, the coronation of Jesus Christ on David's throne at God's right hand, reigning over spiritual Israel. His Jewish auditors were cut to the heart. They said, Brethren, what shall we do? Verse 37, Peter said, Repent ye and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, that's for or unto the remission of your sins. A marvelous thing indeed. Oh, they that glad to receive his word were baptized. Oh, and the Lord added to the church daily, such as were being saved. The Gospel Broadcasting Network has brought you Preaching the Gospel with James Watkins. We make available free cassettes and CDs of our programs. If you would like a copy of today's program, please call us toll-free at 1-888-805-3390 and mention the lesson number you see on your screen. When you call, you may also enroll in our free Bible study course. Make a note of our phone number and give us a call or mail your request to GBN Post Office Box 23604, Chattanooga, Tennessee 37422. Preaching the Gospel is a work of the Churches of Christ. Contributions of congregations and individual Christians make this broadcast possible. And now, back to my dad, James Watkins. When we understand the nature of the church, we see that it is an exclusive body as the only possible means through which the wisdom of God can be made manifest to a fallen world. You see, denominationalism, with all of the good work in a practical way that they do, are made up of many, many good people, there's no question, but they can't spread the good news of human redemption because they have joined some religious institution. Friends, you can't join salvation. We must be saved. And when we are saved, we're no longer lost. We are of the ecclesia. We are of the called out body, redeemed by the blood of Christ, saved from our sins. When by faith we turn away from the practice of sin, confess the name of Christ before men, and we are buried with him in baptism, we are thus born into the family of God. And from that position, we make known his manifold wisdom.